Hello everyone and thank you for the warm welcome. My name is Isabel Fletcher from Horizon NUA, one of the partners of the Connecting Nature project. Together with my colleague Esme Quigman from Connecting Nature Coordinating Partner Trinity College Dublin, we are pleased to be speaking to you today at this Urban by Nature webinar. One of the tools developed during the Connecting Nature project is the Connecting Nature framework for the implementation of nature-based solutions. In this webinar, we will focus on two elements of the framework, financing and business models for nature-based solutions and nature-based enterprises. Let us look briefly at the growth of nature-based solutions. We can see from the graph that the growth in nature-based solutions has risen in Europe since the mid-2000s. Demand for nature-based solutions in cities is increasing as the concept has become more mainstream and there is wider recognition of the benefits of nature-based solutions among governments, cities and at citizen levels. Their contribution towards climate change adaptation and mitigation and to healthier, cleaner and greener cities pushes demand for these solutions on. Who pays for nature-based solutions? You can see from this graph that for small-scale nature-based solutions, like for example community gardens, the majority of these are often funded by non-government actors, such as community groups or social or not-for-profit enterprises. The funds are normally raised through sources like crowdfunding or private donations. Government-led intervention does not feature so strongly here. At the other end of the scale, as the size and level of investment in the nature-based solution increases, so too does the level of public funding. Often, there is a combination of funding from two or more entities, leading to a hybrid mix of finance, and even governance. So we can see that the demand for nature-based solutions is increasing as they have become more mainstreamed and that nature-based solutions can be paid for in different ways and from different sources. So what are the different financing needs of nature-based solutions? You can see here that we have identified three major phases of funding for nature-based solutions. The first phase is the planning phase. This includes the design and the co-creation with stakeholders. The second phase is the capital investment phase, the actual delivery of the nature-based solution, usually in a relatively short time period and incurring the highest costs. The third and final phase is that associated with stewardship, the ongoing operational costs of the nature-based solution, including monitoring and maintenance. The costs here are usually lower, but are spread over a longer time period. And this has been identified as one of the most challenging phases of financing, if not the most challenging. One of the tools developed for creating sustainable business models is the Nature-Based Solutions Business Model Canvas. The key differences with the conventional business model canvas include a focus on the different types of value used to consider the different types of value created to consider the environmental and social elements of the nature-based solution in addition to the economic an examination of the different types of long-term governance models for the nature-based solution, and consideration is also given to the ongoing maintenance or stewardship costs of the nature-based solution. This tool has now been deployed in multiple city settings and is helpful in bringing together stakeholders to explore alternative financing and governance models. Finally, 
I'd like to end with a case study of how the Nature Based Solutions Business Model Canvas has helped the City of Nicosia to determine the funding model for an element of their city's urban green mobility network. In Nicosia, they have faced huge consistent pressure on their public sector budgets. Restrictions on the type of funding that can be used to support and maintain the large city parks. As a result, it is very difficult to bring in private investment. However, there are over 200 derelict or unused sites around the city and our city partners have identified that there are fewer restrictions on private sector funding if it is to be used to upgrade and develop these sites. Using the Nature-Based Solution Business Model Canvas exercise, the city partners in Nicosia have created an adaptive park scheme, leading to a network of pocket parks that will be mostly privately funded. Some of the key features identified in the business model are a public-private people partnership, where the city councils, the local communities and the private sector work together. An open call for pocket park proposals will be launched by the end of this year for businesses to adopt a park. Fiscal incentives for the corporate sector are being explored to make this an attractive proposition for businesses. And the parks will be co-designed with local communities. And finally, the long-term contracts covering all three phases of nature-based solutions will be awarded. So this is just one example of creative thinking in how to involve the private sector in the delivery of nature-based solutions in cities. Cities are increasingly looking to collaborate with private sector investors to fund nature-based solutions and are actively engaging other stakeholders like communities in developing alternative governance models and management processes. At this stage of the presentation, I will hand over to my colleague Esme to speak on the topic of entrepreneurship and I look forward to answering your questions later in this session. Thank you very much. Thank you, Isabel. So we've, we have just heard about the growing demand uh, in nature-based solutions as well as challenges for implementation. So the first challenge is the financing of nature-based solutions and the second one focuses on the difficulty of finding suppliers uh, for implementing nature-based solutions. These challenges, however, could lead to um, a lot of market opportunities for businesses in the private sector uh, and also for nature-based enterprises. So nature-based enterprises use um, nature as a core element of their product or service offering. The use of nature uh, needs to be sustainable uh, and contribute to biodiversity net gain. So these enterprises can support cities, private and third sector organizations in the planning, delivery and management of nature-based solutions. Um, and moreover, these types of enterprises also uh, support climate change uh, and biodiversity policy, uh, as well as generate benefits for local economies, communities and for the wider environment. So nature-based enterprises may use nature directly by growing, harnessing, harvesting or restoring natural resources in a sustainable way. Uh, or indirectly. So we found the following categories of direct activities uh, that nature-based enterprises undertake. Uh, ecosystem restoration and management, and this could be land, fresh water and marine ecosystems. Uh, nature-based solutions for public uh, spaces such as parks. Uh, nature-based solutions for green buildings such as green living roofs. Um, nature-based solutions for water management and treatment. Uh, sustainable forestry activities, um, sustainable agriculture, such as regenerative agriculture, sustainable tourism, uh, and MBS for health and well-being, such as forest bathing. There are also enterprises involved in the implementation of nature-based solutions that do not necessarily directly use nature, but they still contribute to the planning, delivery, and stewardship of sustainable nature-based solutions. So these indirect categories of activities include advisory services, such as landscape architects and community engagement activities. Um, and because uh, nature-based solutions is still relatively new, uh, another category uh, focuses on education, 
research and innovation activities. Smart technologies then uh, used the, and the use of data are increasingly important for the monitoring and assessment of nature and nature-based solutions. And lastly, financial services for MBS, such as offsetting, nature investment programs, and natural capital accounting. So if you look at examples of nature-based enterprises in the three stages of MBS implementation, an example of an MBE in the planning phase could be a, a landscape architecture company or a business with biodiversity expertise uh, designing the solution. Then for the delivery phase, this could be a horticulture contractor um, building the solution. And then in the stewardship phase, uh, this could be a social enterprise or a community group managing and maintaining the solution. So as I mentioned before, nature-based solution markets are growing and there's huge potential and opportunities for the private sector and for nature-based enterprises in different market sectors. Although there's limited data uh, on the markets available, I have a few examples. So for the green walls, roofs and facades sector uh, in Austria, this sector includes 550 companies and 1200 jobs. Uh, and their market growth was 9% per year uh, over a, a four year period of 2014 to 2018. Um, then for MBS for health and well-being, uh, the value of visiting nature uh, to mental health has been estimated at um, 5.5 trillion euro per year globally. Uh, and this shows opportunities for, for example, uh, forest bathing practices. Then in the field for MBS uh, for water management and treatment, uh, an estimated uh, 25 billion US dollars was invested globally in green infrastructure for uh, water in 2015. Uh, and this was an 11% an increase over the previous year. So now that we have established that nature-based enterprises have a lot of potential and there's also a lot of um, market potential and business potential for them, uh, I'd like to take a look into how you can support uh, nature-based enterprises or nature-based entrepreneurship in general in your country or city. Uh, so the first step is all about raising awareness about nature-based solutions and their benefits. Uh, and this includes economic benefits and opportunities. Um, and then after that, kind of explaining what nature-based ent uh, enterprises are and, and illustrate this, uh, of course, with local examples as well. Then the sec second step is about building alliances to support nature-based solutions and nature-based enterprises. So this could mean uh, inclusion in policy or strategy documents uh, or collaborating with uh, financing or innovation organizations. The third step is to develop enterprise support programs. So depending on how um, developed uh, nature-based enterprises are in your country or city, there are different types of programs. So for example, uh, hackathons uh, focus more on developing business ideas. Um, then incubators uh, focus more on developing enterprises uh, with sustainable business models uh, and from business ideas, uh, essentially. Uh, and then uh, thirdly, uh, accelerators focus more on growing and scaling of already existing um, and sustainable enterprises. So in this uh, presentation, uh, Isabel uh, and I have touched up on information from quite some connecting nature resources. So I just wanted to show you the different guidebooks that we look so you can um, after this presentation, uh, look at this and, and read uh, a bit more in depth about what we've um, discussed today and presented today. Uh, so the first one is the framework guidebook with the seven elements for MBS implementation. Uh, then the second one is the financing and business model guidebook. Uh, and then we have a separate guidebook for the business model uh, canvas for nature-based solutions. And then lastly, uh, there's a guidebook on nature-based enterprises as well. So all of these guidebooks contain practical tools uh, for support for cities, uh, for organizations, businesses and enterprises. And then I would also like to invite you to uh, sign up to the Connecting Nature Enterprise platform. So I think this is a great uh, resource as well, uh, as this is a kind of a vibrant global marketplace for nature-based solutions, uh, and it features vast and class nature-based enterprises. Um, there's over 1,600 registered users already on the platform, uh, and the platform 
score is the communities of practice and each of them are moderated by an industry leader um, and they deliver best practice workshops and they create opportunities for networking and showcasing uh, nature-based enterprises across the globe. So yeah, that was all from us. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.